Good afternoon. My name is uh, Simon Shaw. I'm the Chief Creative Officer. Very grand title. It's not really. I haven't really got a grand role um, at H and K. And I wanted to um, to talk to you about uh, a trend that I guess I'm seeing, and I'm sure you guys have all seen, um, in the communications landscape. I think it's a, it's an incredibly exciting time to be in the communications landscape for lots of the reasons that the guys have been talking about today. Um, changes all around us. There's new opportunities opening up all the time. And I think one of the interesting things is um, what I've just called the blurring of the audience. It's, it's the fact that audiences are not kind of segmented, perhaps, the way they used to be. Um, so my background, really, um, I spent a long time working um, in probably more B2C type communications. Um, since I've been at h and I've been working a lot more with, um, with B2B brands. And what's been really fascinating is to kind of see the convergence of the communications. And, and that's, that's kind of what I just wanted to explore a little bit today. I'm going to be quite quick because I think we want to catch up a bit of time as well. But this kind of convergence of the audience is, is really interesting. Um, so I sort of thought, well, what, what's, what's the question? Well, the question is why are, are, I guess, B2B companies doing communications or we're starting to see more communications that perhaps traditionally we would have seen B2C brands doing? Um, we were speaking to Phil Thomas, who's the CEO of Cannes, which is the International Festival of Creativity. Um, and he's seeing a trend in Cannes where more and more B2B brands are actually winning awards in Cannes. So it's actually, a, it's a, you know, I'm going to show one or two examples, but actually it seems to be a common trend that's actually happening. Um, along with that, he's also um, identified a, tra a trend where B2B companies who perhaps didn't have an ad agency or, or whatever are actually entering work on their own, uh, on their own volition as well, which is, which is interesting. So I just wanted to talk briefly about um, three, um, three brands that are actually doing this incredibly well. Um, GE, Intel, and the, the classic one, Volvo Trucks, which I'm probably not going to show the video of, uh, of today, but the new CAN video actually really shows um, what those guys have been doing. So... GE, what an amazing company, um, 130 years old, um, founded by Thomas Edison, as I'm sure you all know. Um, technology and invention are at the core of everything they do. So if you look at all of the things that they've done, the invention of the light bulb through to X-ray, through to the work they're doing today, an incredibly interesting company, but not one that you would traditionally think of perhaps as a, as a consumer-facing company. Um, but you look at where, where they are and the types of work that they're doing, and it's really interesting. So, I think they were the, um, the second, they were on Vine on the second day it launched. Um, they are on Snapchat now. Um, their Instagram following is huge. Quite interestingly, they're doing fashion collaborations. These are a pair of, um, of sneakers they did with um, Buzz Aldrin. So they're based on the technology of the, uh, of, of the shoes that they put together for the first moon landing. So a company that's doing really uh, a, a sort of amazing communications around its brand. But what's quite interesting, I think, is that everything they're doing is linked back to their core brand purpose, which is technology and innovation is at the core of everything they do. Um, when you listen to, to, to the guys talk about the reasoning that they have sort of entered into the slightly more consumer space, um, they talk about um, wanting to humanize the brand. So they talk about not having this sort of cold brand that's abstract from from the consumer, but it's something that people can kind of understand what they're all about. Um, and they want to connect with people that share GE's passion. So I thought I would show you um, GE a, this, is a, company a video. Built around cutting edge science, technology, and innovation. But the complexity of our work is hard to boil down to a single message that people will relate to. To change that, our mission on social has always been to simplify complex ideas through our messaging and deliver it on channels where the world spends time. For our target audience, tech enthusiasts, that often means emerging platforms untested by brands. As a result, GE was one of the first brands on Vine, where we observed early on that science and DIY Vines were resonating with our audience. That insight led to the creation of a single, simple, six-second science experiment using milk, dish soap, and food coloring. Following the introduction of Revines, the post would become one of the most successful vines by a brand in the platform's history, and would even find its way to other channels. More exciting still, the Vine community took off running, trying the experiment on their own and sharing it using our hashtag, Six Second Science. We recognized a bigger opportunity, but we knew we couldn't do it alone. So we launched the Six Second Science Fair, an invitation for fans to show off their own experiments on Vine. We built a dedicated Tumblr page to serve as the campaign hub, highlighting our favorite fan submissions. Strategic use of paid media spread the word. With a little, well, a lot of help from a brand new breed of video stars. Not to mention a metric ton of earned media. 
After just one week, the results were in, and they were remarkable. The story doesn't end there. Six months later, and the hashtag is still being used widely, proving Six Second Science isn't just a campaign, it's a movement owned by GE. And by remaining at the forefront of social media, we prove to fans that GE is at the forefront of innovation. So I think that's a, a really interesting campaign. And what's really interesting is when you hear GE talk about it, it's something that they started in the office. They saw, it was almost like a, a real-time campaign because they, they started it in the office um, because they were experimenting with Vine. They then very quickly realized that the, the kind of engagement they were getting was, 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 was big. So they kind of broadened the campaign out and then eventually um, made it into a campaign in its own right, um, the Six Second Science Fair. So I thought that was an interesting example to do. And that's just one of the things that GE do. They create and publish content on their own platform. Uh, and as I said, they're very, uh, very busy on Instagram. Um, another really interesting brand is Intel. Um, uh, and I think, again, you know, if you look at these brands, they've got quite interesting kind of purposes. So um, making the impossible possible is a really interesting starting point for a brand to try and go out there and, and talk to people. And they did a partnership with Vice, um, the Creators Project in, in the US, uh, which, again, I think is a really interesting collaboration. Vice, a kind of, uh, I suppose, a, a culture, arts, and, and media um, uh, sort of platform. Um, linking together with Intel to sort of to try and bring to life this notion that you know with Intel you can make the impossible possible. So I'm just going to show you that. Break everything apart and reassemble everything and produce something new. I think that's one of the great things about the arts in general. They are very good at saying, kind of, you know, can we be part of this? This is where the name came from originally. It's from a drawing I did. It's an ongoing process. There's never an end in art. I'm not afraid to try ideas out. You're an artist. Your responsibility is to experiment. So I kind of look at that and I think, oh, Intel. That's an ingredient brand doing some really, really amazingly exciting, exciting work. And I guess as, um, as a creative person working in the communications uh, industry, it suddenly feels to me like oh, there's a whole much mo uh, sort of more uh, to go for uh, creatively and actually uh, explore. Um, Volvo Trucks, I'm not going to show you the video. I'm just looking at Sam shaking her head. But I'm sure you're all very familiar with Volvo Trucks. Um, what's quite interesting, going back to the YouTube conversation earlier, is um, Volvo Trucks' campaign, um, which was a series of six videos, ended with the famous Steven Seagal video where he does the splits. That is the most viewed um, automotive ad on YouTube. And then you think about the money that Mercedes and Ford and all the other clients are actually spending to, actually, um, uh, to, to, to get that kind of view, and yet Volvo Trucks are, have managed to do it. Um, and I think the interesting thing also there is um, if you look at the stats, I think there's a, there's a number of different economic and regu regulatory things happening at the time. But between um, uh, 2012 and 2013 in November, I think their sales were up 31%. So it wasn't just due to the video, but actually it's having a real impact commercially as well. Um, there we go. So um, 
I kind of thought, well, what, what's driving this? And a lot, it's interesting having sat this morning and listened to everyone talk because these are common themes that, are, that have been coming up this morning. Um, what is driving this kind of um, new approach? Um, I've just called it um, blurred audiences, um, audience investigators, and changing audience influence. So there's three things which I think we can clearly identify that's, that's making it um, absolutely appropriate for B2B brands to actually talk to a much broader much broader audience, uh, a much uh, uh, broader set of uh, consumers. So blurred audience, what might we mean by that? I think the way we're consuming uh, content and the way that we categorize content has changed. So we don't go to work. I think of my father, I always use my father as an example, he was an engineer. You know, he got up, he went to work, he was at work at nine o'clock, I guess, probably checked in. And he, he, you know, he would have read the technical magazines when he was at work, and at work he was Mr. Engineer. And then he came home, and when he was at home, he was Mr. Father, and he did you know, he watched BBC or whatever it was we watched in the evening. So very much the way he categorized his life was work and, uh, and actually um, work and sort of family. And, and I think the way that we all kind of consume media now, it, it's a kind of a mashup. You know, you kind of, the way we work is more flexible, therefore the way we're consuming media is more flexible. So I think we can be a, a different and yet connected audience simultaneously. So we can be connected to what our day-to-day our -day job is, um, as well as actually all the other things that, that, that kind of make up our life. So there's definitely this kind of blurring of, um, blurring of the audience, uh, of who we are and how we define that audience. Um, audience investigators. I think, again, somebody spoke about this earlier, but this, this notion that we have to have a purpose, a brand, a brand purpose, is kind of becoming key. Um, so it's becoming more important for the likes of GE to actually go out and tell people what they're all about, because actually um, people need to know what they're all about in, in order to buy into, into their products. And actually, a creative way is a very good way for them to go and, and do that. So, you know, they can't just say it, they have to demonstrate it. Um, um, the audience needs to know who you are, not just what you do. And I think that's a kind of a really interesting reason for, for brands to go out and actually, or B2B brands to go out and be, be this, communicate in a slightly different way. And then the final point um, is the changing audience influence. And I think uh, if I was to show you, I had shown you the Volvo um, ad, that was very much the premise for their communications plan, was that actually friends, children, whoever of the truck drivers were all going to influence them and all going to kind of uh, tell them about this great stuff that was happening with Volvo trucks. And um, again, I'll use a, a personal example. I, I was doing a talk um, at the end, two years, a year ago, after Cannes 2013. And um, it was the year that, if you remember the, um, the ad, um, Dumb Ways to Die, do you remember that, that little cartoon? It was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And I thought, oh God, am I gonna have to stand up and talk about Dumb Ways to Die? Because everyone in the audience will have seen it, as you probably all would have seen the Volvo uh, thing. Um, I thought, I'm not gonna show it. There's no point in me actually showing that ad. And I was at home on the Sunday before the talk on the Monday, and I was sat in, in uh, watching, I don't know, I was sat preparing the presentation. I ended up playing Dumb Ways to Die, and I live in a tiny little village in Buckinghamshire, way out in the middle of the sticks. Um, and I've got two little daughters, one is eight and one is four, and as I was playing the video, they came into the room and started to dance around and sing the video. And I thought, isn't that weird? That actually, you know, a four-year-old and an eight-year-old know the words to this video that I was gonna talk about in the context of award-winning communication campaigns. And I think that's a really sort of interesting illustration of how you get your influences from everywhere now. So you can be probably the most high-powered CEO, decision maker, uh, whatever, in the B2B space. But actually, if you know, you're, you're picking up your, your influences from, from all over the place. Um, so what does that mean? What's the conclusion? I think um, what's really interesting is that um, to be more effective, B2B brands um, need to be more innovative and creative in the way they communicate with their audiences. I think we know that, um, or we've got plenty of proof that actually creative um, communications works in the B2C space. There's so much um, evidence out there that the most effective brands are the most, most creative, the most creative brands have the highest um, share price when they're being the most creative. So we know there's very good commercial reasons to be creative. But I feel that there's, um, there's this opportunity, um, a really interesting opportunity for B2B brands to actually move and em embrace that space for, for some of the reasons we've talked about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simon. That was amazing.